Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, we talked about documentation, where we took each of the functions in my Phylotyper R package, and I documented them using Roxygen 2. So the next bit of documentation that I want to think about is this vignette that I've been building out. A vignette is a uh, tutorial, if you will, that's built into your R package. It's executed when your package is built, and it gives instructions for how to, how to use the package, how to interface with the different functions that you have, which is certainly something that I want to do because I want to maximize the utility of my package. One thing I'm thinking about, though, is that when it builds that vignette, um, I don't want it to have to go out to the internet and grab files and pull them down. I want it to all be self-contained. And so this gives rise to a concern we might have about how can we perhaps ship reference data with our package. As you'll no doubt remember, uh, this package is classifying DNA sequences to a taxonomic uh, name, right? And so it does that based on reference sequences as well as a reference taxonomy. And so what I'd like to do today is show you how you can ship your package with data installed in it. And then we might think about whether or not that's a good idea in our situation. Of course, if you want to get the package as it currently stands as I'm recording this, go down below in the show description. You'll find a link to the GitHub repository as of the current commit that we're on. You'll also find a link to what the repository looks like at the end of the episode. Anyway, here you will find in the lower right corner of my RStudio session, the home directory for my project, uh, for the package, Phylotyper, right? And so um, I have been storing my vignette in benchmarking. And so then if you look at vignette.r, you will find uh, my vignette currently <laughs> as it stands. And so what you'll notice is that kind of the first thing that this vignette does is load files that I have stored in benchmarking, which you'll see down here in this train set 19072023.rdp file, right? So this benchmarking directory isn't going to ship with the package. And so what I'd like to do is come up with a better way to provide this data to my user. And as I kind of look at the code here, this first part, these first 13 lines, if you will, build up my Kamer database. Of course, that's what it says on line 11. This is the function name, build Kamer database, and it's using a Kamer size of eight, which I think is often going to be the default size that people wanna use. And so something I'm thinking about is perhaps making two uh, data objects within uh, my, my, my package, right? And so the first would be generating the seek table. And so the seek table is a join of the FASTA data as well as the taxonomy data. And so I could provide a user something like train set 19 underscore DF for this seek table. I could also provide them with a train set 19 underscore DB that would effectively represent this entity. So they could then go directly into the rest of their classification. And I might provide both the data frame as well as the database because perhaps somebody would like to change this to seven, or perhaps they'd actually like to use the sequences without having to worry about this Kamer database. So that's what I wanna think about today. Also, providing data with your package is oftentimes very useful because uh, people can use that data in the examples to help understand how the package and the functions are working. Uh, if you look at a lot of your popular packages, like say ggplot2 or dplyr, they come with uh, data already within them. So as I've been going through this package development, I've been making references back to this book, Our Packages by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan. Uh, today, I'm gonna be talking about chapter seven on data. And specifically, I'm going to be looking at their kind of first section on exported data. There's a couple other ways that you might want to present data with your package. I'm not so concerned about those. I'm mainly interested in exporting data with the package. So the first thing that I'll do is use underscore data underscore raw. And this is a helper function that will create a data underscore raw directory within my overall project, right? So I can then give this a name for building up my, uh, my data set. So I'm gonna call this train set 19. So running that, we see that it does what? It creates a new data a hyphen raw directory, which we can see down here. And again, if I refresh this, it 
alphabetizes things nicely. It added data raw to my R build ignore, so data raw won't ship with it, but we will eventually get a data directory that will ship with it. And it's created a data raw train set 19.r script and uh, it's put something in there. So this is actually what it opened up for us was train set 19.r. At the top, it's got a comment about code to prepare train set 19 data set goes here. And so it includes a line, use this, use data, train set 19. And so this is the final line that we will want uh, train set 19.r to run to create um, the data that goes into our data directory. And so the helpful thing about this script is that it allows us to store the documentation for how we want to build train set 19. In the book, Hadley Wickham tells a story about ggplot2 and how they had these uh, data sets that shipped with uh, ggplot2, but they lost the code for how they built those data sets. And so we don't want to do that, okay? And so I'm going to come to my vignette.r and I'll go ahead and grab uh, these first five lines or so, right? And I will plop them in there. And so now again, I've got my FASTA file, my taxonomy file, and so forth. Um, I'm then going to read um, from uh, the FASTA and the taxonomy files using my phylotyper functions, right? So I'm going to use read FASTA and read taxonomy to read the sequence data and taxonomy data using those functions as are already defined within phylotyper. So I'm going to go ahead and load that package and let's go ahead and run these. And so we see that FASTA DF and genera are generated. Again, if we look at FASTA DF, uh, this is a pretty large data frame uh, as it spits it out. And so if we did like STR on FASTA DF, we'd see that it's got 24,642 rows or observations or sequences, and then three variables consisting of the ID, the accession number, the sequence, and then if we look further down, there's a comment. I'm not really concerned about the comment for all this. And then of course, if we look at the genera uh, and we do str on genera, then we see that we've got the same number of observations, same number of sequences and two variables, the ID again and the taxonomy. And so what we do uh, using dplyr is an inner join of our fast ADF and our genera data frame joining on that ID column. So let's go ahead and generate seek table. And here we get uh, this, which again is as a data frame format, just too complicated. You might be saying, why aren't you showing this as a tibble? And I'm not showing it as a tibble because I don't want to expect the user to have uh, the tidy R and kind of all the, the tidyverse infrastructure built in. Um, and so I, I'm not using the tidyverse really at all within the guts of my package. And so I don't want to require that as a dependency. So it's a little bit harder on me to develop so that it's ultimately perhaps easier on the end user. But if I do str on seek table again, then I see that I've got uh, four variables, right? So I've got the ID, the sequence, the comment, and the taxonomy. I'm gonna go ahead and rename seek table to be train set 19. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that uh, comment column. And I could remove it or I could keep the things I want. And so I'll keep the things I want by doing train set 19 equaling train set 19 and the columns I want, I'll put in a C vector. So I'll do ID and then sequence and then taxonomy. Right. And then I can use this final function from use this use data train set 19. And so what this is going to do is it's going to save the value in train set 19 as a data object that comes with my phylotyper package. And so we run this. So I see that that did a few things. So first it added R to the depends field in the description. I'm not totally sure what that means. Um, I have everything under version control so I can see how things have changed. You could certainly use the Git tab in the upper right corner. I'm more partial to using the terminal. Um, and so I could do Git status to see that again, my description file was modified. So I could do like get diff on description. And what you'll see, um, let's make this a little bit bigger, is that it added a depend section with R being greater than or equal to 2.10. Um, I'm not totally sure why it did that, but hey, um, that's something I don't have to worry about. 
Something else it did then was create the data directory. And so again, if I come down here, I see I now have a data directory. Again, if I refresh it, I see that data is now sorted uh, alphabetically. Looking in here, I now see I have trainset19.rda. And again, if I look back at my git status to see what else changed, um, we see that it modified the .r build ignore. I think that is ignoring, um, so if I do git diff, I think it's ignoring the raw directory, right? And so, yeah, it's ignoring the data raw directory. Okay, cool. So that all makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, and, and of course, it's then telling us to document our data, which is important. And so uh, if we come back up to our R directory, we'll see here that we don't have a .r script for our data, which we will be doing shortly. One thing to note about this use data function is that it allows you to compress the data in different ways. An R package is limited to five megabytes. And so there, there are ways around that, I suppose, but for little old us who's got this little package, uh, I'm not gonna be pushing my luck with the folks at CRAN to get permission to have a larger uh, package because I've got some big reference files. So what you could do would be to do things like compress equals bzip2. And so that is actually the default compression algorithm and so alternatively, what you could do would be gzip. And so gzip is another way of compressing uh, the data than bzip2. Alternatively, another option would be xz as another form of compression. And so um, when you build your package, you can see what effect these different methods have on the overall size of your package. I'm gonna roll with the default algorithm of bzip2. Uh, again, that's the default, so I really don't need to say compress equals bzip2, but I'll leave it in there for now. So a tool that they talk about using uh, to check the size of your package and kind of what is the optimal uh, compression size is to use tools, um, colon, colon, and then it's resave RDA files. And so it says this reports for each of the files produced by save the size, if it was saved in ASCII or XDR binary format, and blah, blah, blah. And so if it was saved, what format? So we'll see how this does. So we'll go ahead and resave this. Um, I think we can do it with the default. Uh, and we need to put in here data forward slash. And so it doesn't tell us what compression algorithm it used to find uh, the smallest possible RDA files. So another tool that we can use is tools check RDA files. And again, it needs to include uh, the path, so data. And so we find that the compression it used was XZ and the size is here, which I think is about 1.6 megabytes. And so to make it work this way next time, to use this compression algorithm next time, I will replace bzip2 with XZ. Again, running that will now get it to be compressed to that size, which again, using this tools package with the uh, check RDA files and the um, check um, uh, resave RDA files functions will help us to get the smallest possible um, RDA file. That's the data file that's being stored. Because again, we want things to be as small as possible. The book here says that you want things less than a megabyte when you submit to CRAN. Other places I've seen say five megabytes. Those other places have also shown that there are quite large <laughs> um, data sets available on CRAN. So, um, in general, we want to keep things as small as possible. And so using this XZ compression will certainly help us do that. So again, this um, trainset19.r script will not be stored with the package on CRAN, but the data or the, yeah, the data in the data directory, this trainset19.rda will be, okay? So as the use data function tells us to document our data, and it refers us actually to the chapter that I'm talking about in today's episode. And so what we need to do is go into R. Well, we can do it from the command line. We don't have to go into the R directory. We can do use underscore R. We can then say data. This then creates a data file in our R directory, right? And so then what we can do is really all we have to do to make it accessible would be to say something like train set 19, okay? And so again, if we save, we can always load these things, right? And uh, we now need to add documentation to our um, data.r script to tell our users something about train set 19, right? So if I do something like 
question mark train set 19. It's going to say no documentation. So we want to add documentation. So previously we have seen that we could do something like code insert Roxygen skeleton, and we would get the Roxygen skeleton, but it says there's no function. <laughs> You're right. Your cursor isn't within the body of that function. And so the, the book, um, alternatively, the website gives you a really helpful um, insight into how to build this skeleton. So this is the website for the book. I personally uh, like having both formats because I like to be able to sit in my chair and read, um, but it's also nice for copying and pasting purposes to have the online version as well. So anyway, down below in the description, I also have links to both the book as well as the free website version if you want to check that out. But again, this is chapter seven on data. And looking at the right side, you'll see exported data is the section I've been talking about. And that what we need to do now is document our data set. And so this then brings us to a very helpful um, skeleton, if you will, for what our uh, comment, our, our documentation could look like for our train set 19 database. One of the other things that's very helpful and they make a big point of in the book is to go out into the wild looking at packages that you know and love and look at what type of data that they're providing and how they're providing documentation for that. And so this is a World Health Organization, WHO TB data, that is part of, um, I forget what package, I wanna say dplyr. Um, and so the, um, the, the, this is also a data set called who, WHO, right? And so you can see that we already have this WHO part. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into my code here go ahead and save. And if I then did document, it should then build that uh, RD documentation file for train set 19. Let's see if that works. And it sure does, right? And it's giving us this World Health Organization TB data, which isn't what I want, but you can kind of begin to see how stuff in this skeleton translates over to what we have in uh, the documentation in this help file, right? And so I'm going to start modifying this to indicate um, what I want people to know about the database. And because it's really painful and boring to watch someone else type uh, documentation, especially, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be right back and I'll show you uh, kind of what I did as I wrote out this documentation. So I went ahead and typed in some documentation. The title that I'm gonna use is RDP training set V19. It's the 19th version of the RDP training set. Um, and it, here's a description of it. Uh, a little bit about the provenance of where the data came from. And so then there's a format section that we kind of saw like we had over here uh, for the WHO data set, where we have a description of the data, each row representing a different sequence. Um, this is actually wrong. It doesn't have four columns. It has three columns as I've described here, right? And so then you can see that there's this describe block like we had before for the WHO that is, is kind of enters in here where we can see um, kind of the name of the argument, if you will, or actually the name of the variable, the data column in our data frame, right? And along with a description of each of those columns. I then have down below a section on source where I have a bulleted list and I have mother formatted files, description of how mother formatted files are generated and the RDP source uh, forge page. So if I go ahead and open these, and so this brings us to the mother website and I have a page for RDP reference files. I also have reference files for green genes as well as Silva. I won't get into that right now, um, but you'll find here are two downloads, one for the RDP based version and one for a modified version that I came up with. Uh, this number is a little bit different than what um, I had, um, but if I kind of look down here at the summary output, um, I think my number here, this 23853 is wrong, <laughs> that it is 24642. I'll go ahead and check that later, but uh, we're okay. We can roll with that. The other bit of source documentation I included was a description of how I made um, that file. So opening up that page, we get a blog post that I wrote on kind of how I did everything, how I downloaded everything from the RDP's uh, archive and what, everything I did to get the data to conform to a Linnaean taxonomy with uh, kingdom or domain, phylum, class, order, family, and genus. The default RDP data set that comes from their website sometimes has like subclasses, some families, sub uh, genera, I guess not sub genera, but all these kind of sub taxonomic levels thrown in. And those just kind of make things painful, right? 
Um, and so I'm not going to worry about those so much. Um, but again, I want to provide information on where the data came from. And then finally, I also have a link here to the SourceForge website where I got all my data. Um, and so again, just trying to provide documentation about where these different files came from. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that and we'll rerun document. And again, if I look at the help page on this, refreshing that, um, we now see that we have all our good stuff, right? So we've got the title, the description, the usage, how you get access to it, the format, what's in it, all these kind of things that you see over here on the left side of the screen, along with hyperlinks for um, my different source files. I could modify this to be more of a markdown style. We saw how to do that um, in a last episode with documentation that there's something in the um, description file that allowed us to say that we wanted to use markdown with Roxygen. And there we go. You'll see that we have mother formatted files as the word that's linked. I kind of like that better than um, having the long URL, certainly like this one we have here. I think it looks a little bit cleaner and a bit more polished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Again, to put a hyperlink in uh, behind some words, you wrap the words or kind of what you wanna see here, like this mother formatted files in square braces, and then you link it to something that's in um, parentheses. And then you don't want the greater than and less than signs at the ends. So I'm just gonna quickly clean this up here. All right, and we'll clean that up, save, and then document. And so now we see that we've got um, those links there, and I think that looks pretty nice. So I'm now gonna go back to my build tab and go ahead and do check to make sure everything works as hoped. So what we get back is a warning and a note. We don't want any warnings or any notes, and certainly no errors. Um, and then so if we look at the warning, it says checking lazy data, lazy uh, data DB of 5.9 megabytes without lazy data compression set. And so we need to set that. Um, and then we also are told that checking installed package size is 7.1 megabytes, which is larger than it wants. So let's go ahead and set this lazy data compression in our description page. And so we'll go back up to description and then I'm gonna come back up uh, where I have lazy data true. That was something that was added when uh, we did the use data raw, I believe, or maybe the use data function. And here I'll put in XZ as the compression format that we'll use. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and check it again and see if that warning and note go away. Wonderful. The warnings and notes went away. I am still a little bit worried that our package size might be quite large. As we kind of go back through these checks, there's nothing that jumps out at me as being a possible problem. So that's great. It passed all the checks. Theoretically, we could submit this to CRAN and life would be good. But there's one other thing that I wanted to add, um, which was to take that database, that seek table or train set 19, and convert that into the database. And I think I said that I was gonna make this actually underscore DF. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that as DF. And then here I will make this uh, train set 19 uh, DF. And maybe I'll make these also DFs. And I also wanna make the, um, the database version. So I'll make that there. And then down here, uh, we'll go ahead and make DB, okay? And so the code to do that is again here in our vignette. And I'll copy this into uh, what I've got here. And so uh, this again will be train set 19 underscore DB. And instead of seek table sequence, we'll use train set 19. All right. And then we'll get this all to fall in line. And then we'll also use our use this uh, to do DB and I'm gonna leave it with the compression XZ. So I forgot to update my files before running line 17 here. So let me go ahead and do all that. And we'll regenerate the 19 underscore DF, which we hadn't had before, as well as running use data. And so now let's generate the database. So train set 19 DB is a list um, that's got two values in it. So again, if we run this, it's going to just vomit all sorts of information out to us. Um, as we can see, but if I did str on that, 
we now see that we get a list of two values, one being the conditional probability um, for each, uh, each row of a array being uh, the different possible eight MERS, and then each column corresponding to um, each genus that's represented. And then there's a second slot in the database list that corresponds to the genera. So we see that the number of genera corresponds to the number of columns in conditional prob. And this is a log uh, probability of seeing a specific kmer coming from a specific genus. If you want to learn all about this, go back a bunch of episodes where I describe how to do that. Uh, it takes maybe like 15 seconds or so to generate as we just saw. It's pretty quick, but at the same time, it might be a nice convenience um, to provide the DB version of the file to people so that they don't have to regenerate themselves. So I'll double check that I've got that loaded um, and use data. So that took quite a while to run. The XZ compression format is a bit slower than the other formats. Perhaps it's kind of one of those things that if you want it done well, it's gonna take a while. So we get excellent uh, um, compression, but it's still at about 64 megabytes. The other thing I see is that our old version of Trainset 19 is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But um, before I get too squirrel brained and forget about this, this again is making me think a little bit more hesitantly about um, putting the data into the package as like part of the official release. And then perhaps whether or not it's actually worth making the, the database version of the data. Um, maybe we'll include it and just kind of see how things play out, but um, it's still quite big. Um, and, and I'm not totally sure that it's going to be worth it in the long run to be storing something. Like, admittedly, it's not that big. It's not like gigabytes, but it's it's quite a bit bigger than the data frame version, which then takes 15 seconds to convert to make the database version. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little bit something. Ah, whatever. I'm I'm kind of <laughs> muttering my my talking uh, because I don't know what to do. So I think I'll leave it and we'll kind of move on. All right. The next thing we need to do before we totally move on is to go ahead and document this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy what I had here um, for DF and make it DB. So I'll go ahead and save this and then let's run document. And so when I ran document, what you'll notice is that because I deleted the file, I think it then deleted the trainset19.rd file, but it then regenerated the data frame and database versions, right? So again, if I do trainset19df, I then get that help page, right? And if I do uh, the database version, we get that, right? And I notice that I've got a file taper database. Maybe there I'll use the back ticks and the curly braces. So let's go ahead and document again. Of course, refresh this and we get the nice pretty formatting. So let's go ahead and check things out one more time to make sure it all works. So that took a very long time to run, uh, but it did uh, check out successfully, albeit with one note. The installed size is 147 megabytes. Uh, and so that's not good, right? I'm, I'm not sure why it's so large considering the size of the compressed data file. Um, so this is again, giving me pause to think about whether or not we should be including this DB file in the package um, and whether it, it might just be better to let the, let the end users generate it themselves. In here now, I should be able to do train set uh, 19 underscore df, and it's already loaded as part of the package. You'll see that that's not included here in my global environment. All this could go away, and I could do uh, like this, right? Where I've got train set 19 df dollar sign sequence, train set 19 df under dollar sign taxonomy um, to then build the Kmer database. Again, that takes a couple seconds, and is really making me think that this train set db version just isn't, isn't worth the hassle of, um, of working with it, frankly. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead then and remove um, some of these. And I want to see that we can classify Bactroid alleys. So we'll go ahead and load these. And then we very quickly get uh, the classify sequence to run through. And then what we get back is the result that we're expecting, where we've got our taxonomy um, as well as our confidence scores for, for classifying this bactroid LA sequence. So again, we can see that our vignette has gotten much smaller, right? And so that is really nice. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit to move some of this information back up uh, towards the top, things that are like arguments and variables. And so we can see now that our vignette is a lot simpler 
and that we're ultimately going to make things a lot easier on our end users. The thing that I keep harping on that I'm not sure about is what to do with um, the database version versus the data frame version. I'm really thinking that we're going to roll with the data frame version because it's a lot more compact than the database version. And there's just all sorts of problems that I feel like we're going to run into in terms of how do we make that accessible to our end users if we use the big database version. The other thing I'm thinking about is that there's all sorts of previous versions of the RDP training set. There's also Green Genes, there's also Silva. And what I'm thinking I might want to do instead of putting the data into the Phylotyper package is to make separate packages for each of the different databases as well as their versions. And then because those tend to be large, I can host those up on GitHub and there's a dev tools install underscore GitHub function that would allow users to install, if you will, those packages into their computers and then use them much like we have here, right? And so that would be um, a little bit of a added burden to our user, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. And we are providing uh, the data, the reference data for them in a format that will work very easily um, with, with the rest of the vignette. So I think I like how this is coming together. We will be building a data package. There are other data packages out there. And so we'll talk a bit about that. And we'll also refresh our memory of how to make a package uh, from the ground up as if we haven't been doing that all along. So you don't miss that episode. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and please tell your friends about what we're doing here on Code Club as we continue to build out this Phylotyper package.